We are fortunate to have Alice White and Phil White and Arlene Gruber, who Alice White says know more about knows more about Tuckahoe than anyone else. And she said she was born on Main Street. I don't think literally on the street, but <laughs> um, th these are treasures of the past of Tuckahoe. And what's I think very very interesting is I went to a meeting of the Historical Society where I live on Long Island now. And they were talking about really all the wonderful things they had from the 18th century and the 19th century. But they had very little from the 20th century because that's when we all lived and we didn't think that was history. So there, take a look at what you have from the 20th century and it may become another one of Tuckahoe's treasures. So, Alice. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us here again, and it's always a pleasure to come. Uh, most of you know that we started out with the Millennium with Vicki Ford, and we continued on to the Centennial, and we've been working ever since. Uh, we meet every Thursday from 9 to 12, and that's not really enough time to do all the things that we do. Um, so with, with um, that, uh, we'll go into a few of the items here, and then I'll turn it over to Phil and Arlene. This is a picture of the Bronx River Parkway back when you could swim there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so at, we'll pass it around after so you can get a closer look at it. And on Marbledale Road, back in 1967, we had Alexander's sales. And then look at the bikini. <laughs> and you'll be welcome to come up and take a look at that. And now I'll pass it over to Phil and Arlene. And then after, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. What you see here is only a small fraction of what we have in Village Hall. And the reason why we like to get out and do these things is that we get a lot of ideas and uh, sometimes some memorabilia that we could add to our collection. So think about what you have in your house, how uh, other people may like uh, some of the things that you uh, have, photos, little relics, we even have somebody bring us a nice pic here. Uh, now you know what you do with those, right? Yeah. Then were the days when you used to get a quarter piece of ice for the, per day, and when they delivered it on Saturday, it was a 50 cent piece because it had to last two days. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Tucker was a rather unique village. <clears throat> There's a lot of firsts here. You know, you probably heard of the marble industry, you heard about the PAL, how it was started here. <clears throat> so we collect uh, a lot of those things. My favorite collection is those of uh, Vin Bellew's uh, columns. Uh, now, uh, for, you, for those of you that don't know uh, about Vin Bellew, he, his last uh, employment was with the town of Eastchester. He was the uh, recreation director. Now, prior to that, and starting with, uh, even uh, prior to World War II, he, he was uh, with the uh, WPA, and it, he used to uh, give out the uh, the different jobs around the community. He went into uh, World War II. He he was uh, uh, rehabilitating some of the soldiers that were wounded over in England. And there's a couple of articles I have here that I'm going to leave with you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about them later. 
And after that, he came back uh, to uh, the area, and he was uh, a uh, recreation director up at uh, West Point. So he had such a, a, a beautiful background, and he talked about a lot of things. Most people used to th think that he was just talking about obituaries, but it was more than that, believe me. Uh, so let's go through some of these items here. Uh, one of the things that... Uh, these are samples of some of the uh, decorations that the uh, servicemen got. Uh, we'll leave that here too for you to show. I, I want to show them the, the one about the birth certificates. You know, a lot of the people in uh, during the Depression and prior to that, I used to have a midwife to deliver children. And we had one of the midwives give us a copy of all the birth certificates. This is Philomena Fiore. Uh, uh, okay, she was the, and it was the uh, Dolores. The, the records of the birth that Philomena Fiore, a midwife, she was the mother of Carmela Dorenzo. And all these records are in here. However, they are so fragile that we put them in a book. And so we'll leave the book out for you to look at. People have come into Village Hall and actually found a relative that she delivered. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And for those of you that know that building across the street, that's where I was born, in the that building, second floor bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> those were the days, you know, you didn't go to the hospital uh, yeah. to have a baby, you had to be at home. And uh, another the unique thing that they did too, uh, prior to World War II, most of the wakes were held in the houses. In the house, right. yeah. 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 They used to send the bodies, uh, there was the Romanos funeral building down there on Columbus Avenue. And they used to go there to have the body prepared, and then they would deliver it to the home where they had the party and the wake at the same time. And that, that, those were normally five days. Now it's, uh, now it's three days and mostly one day. Of course, you pay one, two, three, no more. Well, what does it say here? This is a picture, oh, this is the, the Pippo family. And uh, the, the uh, names of them are uh, sitting in, the, uh, uh, are listed in the back. And I don't know, do you know what year that was? Uh, 1902. 1902? Want to talk a little bit about this, Esther, bringing up, bro? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, boy. No, no, sorry. Nope, no, no, sorry. Sorry. This picture happens to be the time when my grandfather the real Alphonse de Pippo came to Europe in 1902 and he settled on Washington Street in Tuckahoe. And from that <coughs> period on, all his sons who grew up moved up the hill, what they call the hill, which is Martin Street, and each brother built his, their own home. So we had seven brothers all living on Martin Street. And I'm one of the heirs <laughs> of the brothers, but with all our cousins, we got along very well. Nobody fought. We weren't jealous of each other. And that's where we all grew up. And today, we are on our sixth generation who live in East Chester. Isn't that great? Wow. So I don't want to monopolize this. Uh, Arlene, why don't you come forward and talk about some of the items that you'd like to talk about? I do. I do. Um, we have here a bell, a trolley bell from Waverly Square, as many of you know or do not know. The, uh, they had trolleys. Oh, yeah. they, used to, they used to go back and forth. And um, yeah, it was, was the old church, I think, was uh, the Mantle Conception Church was originally in Waverly Square, right. up yeah. near where the firehouse is. Right next to the firehouse. That was that. So we have that. And then we have um, further on down here, we have some bottles. We have from the Coca Cola plant, which was on the corner of Midland 
uh, which is now torn down. We have, yeah, it says Tecahoe, New York on the bottom of this. And we also have uh, from the Tavalilla Brothers uh, one of the soda bottles. Yeah, <laughs> they used to make all the Because they used water. And who sent for the uh, bottles? And they had that. And then we have a, um, a whiskey bottle. Oh, a whiskey bottle. Columbus Avenue was Breckenridge Road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Columbus Avenue was Breckenridge Road. And this is a whiskey bottle. Someone get it There's, um, I was raised on Main Street, right, uh, right around from Jefferson. Uh, 112 Main Street, which is now gone. Uh, I think the Tom Stone restaurant is there now, and uh, Mickey's Deli, and uh, Salerno's, at Salerno's, and at Salerno's was there, the meat market. And uh, when I was a little girl, my mother used to send me to the next door to Salerno's, and um, Mrs. Salerno always told the story that I was so small, and my mother, they would put the change in the bag for me, and they, they'd say, how could they let a little girl like that go out? But I was just small for my age. <laughs> but we, had, uh, we lived in um, uh, 112 Main Street, and downstairs was uh, Mr. Zanzano. Yep. He was a barber. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Gagliardi was the shoemaker. Shoemaker, yeah. And the chief stool lived on the second floor. I can't remember who else. But the Zanzanos lived on the top floor <coughs> where we lived. And we lived there till I was about six, and then we moved up to not far, 87 Main Street, <laughs> uh, where Celestino's was. Oh. And we, I lived there till I was about 30, and we moved up to Grand Street. But uh, up and down Main Street, there was, I could tell you, every store that was in every place on Main Street, and the times we had. And um, with your, uh, what's your name again? Right. Faye, Faye, with your son-in-law, Serencione has lived on the corner right. on Cameron Place. That's right. And uh, as kids, we all used to uh, play hide and seek, you know. And if you were it for the night, you were it for the night. Because we used to run all the way down to uh, Main Street and then back. And uh, Mrs. Serencione would make lunch for us. And we, we just had a wonderful time. We, we all got together. and. We all played together, which was nice, you know, and I have very nice memories. My grandfather um, uh, was uh, first president of the Board of Education, Daniel J. Meyer, and they have the, um, every year at the high school, they have the J Daniel J. Meyer Award for the uh, best in region subjects, and so uh, I think only one relative ever won that <laughs> in our family, but uh, I went to Immaculate Conception and uh, to the eighth grade and then on to Tucko High School and then I started working right out of high school. But every day when we would come down from the Macla Conception, we'd always stop at the Coca-Cola plant and they would let us sit on the big windowsills there and we would just sit there and all of a sudden they'd pass over a bottle of soda that just, just it didn't make it or something like that. And we had Rizzoli's on the corner, the grocery store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had them. And we had uh, just so many places, and it was really nice. And Tucko was a good place to live, and it's still a nice place to be. Thank you. An interesting story about the uh, about the quarries. Uh, I'm sorry, not the quarries, but the uh, <clears throat> the trolley. There's a book written. It's called the Great Mouthpiece. It's written uh, about a lawyer, but you know it's not uh, uh, something that only lawyers would understand. It was a very cute story, and he talks about the trolley, uh, and he lived uh, par partially in Nourishell, and he said that you could get on the trolley in Nourishell for a nickel. Yeah. And get transfer, transfer at the transfer, and end up in, in Boston. So if you had a lot of time in your hands and a spare nickel, you can get to Boston. There are a few other things here that you're welcome to come up and see later. This is an old Tuckahoe uh, coat hanger, and on there it has the name of the store, the East Chester Valley. <laughs> on 44 Main Street in Tuckahoe, and someone brought that in. And also we have a few boxes there from 
Uh, Vera's welcome. Yeah. And there's some there pictures there also of the Hodgman Rubber Company. Yes. That was there at that time. Um, oh, we have a lot of books over here. Um, this is a book that maybe some of you never saw before, but they had the Lawrence Home Care of Westchester, and for a very long time we we wanted to know who these ladies were because they looked so starched. <laughs> and in this book are their names. But we advertised even on TV and and all trying to find out their names. And then when uh, the library was kind enough to give us this and the names are in here, so you're welcome to look at this and pass it around. And um, there's books here from the Hodgman Rubber Company. And here's some of the pictures of uh, all the Hodgmans that started the Hodgman Rubber Company. And Bill uh, will have some here. There's a little piece of home marble. Piece of Tucker oh, Marble. Mm -hmm. And this picture here is the village hall when they had the cupola on top. And everybody always asks me what happened to the cupola. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if anybody knows the answer to that, that would be really nice. But <coughs> pass it around. See the cupola on top? And this postcard was from 1908. Wow. It was sent to Marjorie, looks like Cook. Mm -hmm. You can pass that around. And, um, what else is here, Phil? And then we have this, uh, the, the Villager, that was published in 1985. It tells a lot about the marble industry in here. And unfortunately, this is the only one we have. <laughs> so if anybody has another one of these, that would be nice. Please, when you're cleaning out for whatever reason, um, check your pictures and because you might not think they're good, but they might be important for Tucker. So we would appreciate that. And also we have a menu from Woolworth Company. And do you know that you could get a ham salad sandwich for 30 cents? <laughs> and forget that, you could have a banana split for 39 cents. So this is kind of fun. This came over the internet, actually. So it's kind of fun. We put, posted it in Village Hall. We always tell everybody, oh, cool, what we can have a nice lunch. Now, uh, <coughs> other things that we have there, a lot of old photos. And I brought one along uh, so that you could see. Now, of course, most of you remember what uh, the uh, Conlon brothers sold. Yep. Now, prior to that, he used to have a coal company right here on Columbus Avenue. And uh, this is one of his little uh, wagons that he would haul stuff around in. We will start it here. <coughs> and and uh, I, I don't know whether many of you remember this. Can any of you see what that is? Anybody know about our Hannibal Diner? Oh, yeah. This is the first picture of it, the first Annabelle Diner. Okay, we'll start this one uh, over here. You know, as, as uh, high school kids, uh, after every dance and maybe on Saturday night, we go down there for a cup of coffee and a piece of pie. Uh, they were open all sorts of crazy hours. Now, I, t I talked a little bit about uh, Bellew and some of the things that he uh, did. In, um, he talks about this one a uh, story that he heard uh, during World War I where the German captives were in this particular camp and, uh, and they, uh, they didn't have anybody to play the organ for Christmas Eve and they searched around for all of our soldiers to find out about where, they, where somebody could play the organ. They couldn't so they took one of the uh, German prisoners and in the uh, feeling of brotherhood and, and uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, spirit of Christmas, they had the, uh, the German prisoner uh, play the organ. Phil? No. Yes? Do we have that the back to the wagon? Does the family still have that? Or I would doubt it. You doubt it? Okay. I would doubt it. And That's such an old picture. 
Do you have any any pictures of our old movie house? You better believe it. Yeah, of course. What do we have pictures? We have a picture there of a pile of metal and rubber in front of it because uh, Mr. Linhart, who happened to be a very patriotic and a beautiful person, he, he said to the kids, look, bring us in a piece of metal or a piece of rubber and we'll let you know the movie's free. That's when they had the collection day. And then another time, prior to that, during the uh, Great Depression, uh, if, uh, he told the kids, uh, bring in a, a, a can of uh, whatever and we'll let you into the, uh, into the movies. Even if it was a can of sauerkraut for Nicholas Sixpence, a, a can. Uh, they were just uh, trying to get the people into the mood uh, to do the uh, volunteer type work. Here's a, another story. And this is one of my favorites of uh, Ben Bellew. And he talks about the great orator. Now, the great orator was a, a teacher here in Tuckahoe. And he was the one that taught Churchill how to speak. Because if you read a little bit about the history of Churchill, he had like a list. And uh, uh, Churchill did make uh, visits here to this country. Because you know his mother was an American. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, he went on later on uh, to become, uh, I, I believe, a uh, congressperson. But his name was Bork Cochran. And I'll send this one around here. Let's go this way this time. And one more article uh, about uh, Christmas Remembered. Now, again, uh, as I mentioned, Ben Bellew was over in uh, England during World War II. And uh, during the war, uh, they had a little party for the kids there. Uh, it wasn't permitted, but, you know, they had all these kids come into the camp, and they had uh, all the, uh, the uh, Ross soldiers that were there to chip in, and they bought presents and whatnot. It's just a heart-rendering story. And one of the uh, pictures that are hanging up in Village Hall as you come in off the elevator is a picture of Main Street in 1906, shortly after the trolley tracks were uh, put in. Because the trolleys lasted from 1906 to 1936. And then uh, uh, I think the last trolley I rode was uh, probably uh, in the early 50s, and it ran from Mount Vernon over to New Rochelle through uh, Pelham Manor. But, uh, you know, the, uh, most of the motor companies, the, those that made buses and whatnot, they, they lobbied hard to get rid of the trolleys. Now they're talking about putting the trolley on 42nd Street from river to river. <laughs> I think we, uh, is there uh, other items there we should be co covering? We also have, that was put to, a booklet that was put, put together by two teachers, and it's Tuckahoe's first 100 years. And I'll pass it around so you can look at it. Uh, it has wonderful pictures on it. And uh, there's a picture here of Mr. Petrillo. Yeah. Petrillo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that family. Mildred Petrillo, his mm -hmm. daughter, used to work in town hall. Uh, she remembers, and we were so we were so happy to have that picture. But there's all old pictures in here that are absolutely wonderful, and we sell these to raise money so that we can continue with our work. Uh, but you're welcome to uh, take a look at it and pass it around, and. Um, I think that's about it. And we also have, um, if you want to pass around that uh, book with the births in it, yeah, the big one, yeah. And you can take a look there too. It's it's really interesting. I want to spend some time and just go through and read it because it's very interesting. It's a lot of history. Yeah. They copied, they copied everything from those cards. Yeah. Because the cards are so fragile that we didn't want people to open them up. Then. So you might find something interesting. I think that's about it. Does anybody have? Uh, all we have is a swinging, a swinging '60s party. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is um, this is a little history of the, um, the senior center here. And so you're welcome to also look at these pictures and pass them around. Um, and we have a little present here for Barbara. 
this is the history tour of Tuckahoe if you'd like to show it to the group at some time. Okay, so sometime when you have a little time. Oh, this will be wonderful. We can show it uh, after lunch one day, a history tour of Tuckahoe. And thank you very much. Uh, one last bit of information. Uh, in order to uh, have uh, the amount of um, history items and history uh, photos, we meet on uh, Thursday mornings over at Village Hall, and uh, most of the items we get is from talking to various people. They say, oh, I have something, oh, I have something, and they, they give us a copy of it or give us the relic. So if any of you have anything, we'd appreciate it. And of course, if any of you have an hour or two that you want to spend with us, uh, doing clippings and whatnot from the newspapers that we think that are going to be important for uh, uh, future people, uh, residents of Tuckahoe, to know about, uh, which is, uh, you know, we think is very important. Uh, if any of it has anyone have a question that you would like to talk about something else, uh, we're here. No, no one has a question. I think one of the questions is, what do we have down there? And that's very hard to, uh, to be able to explain to you all the different things that we have. But we do have an index book, <coughs> excuse me, an index book there. And if you're lo looking for something specific, go into that index book and see if it's there. Most likely, probably what you're asking for is there, because there's a tremendous uh, amount of uh, items there. There are three uh, main uh, cabinets. And incidentally, uh, the history committee is the one that uh, made the money to be able to, uh, to build those cabinets, which, uh, and then there's a, a, a smaller cabinet there, and we have the drawers loaded with photos, a lot on the fire department, a lot on the police department, uh, a lot on uh, urban renewal, uh, you name it, we have it. So, uh, you're welcome to come see it. Yes? Phil, so wasn't there, was there a fire in, in uh, City Hall? Like, let's see, my mother would be 90 now, I don't even know how old. So 100 years ago, it oh. seems the story uh, that's told to us kids was that we had a guest for birthday day. Somebody gave her a date. She was born so and so date and year because the records had burned down and they had no record of her birth. Do you know anything it, it, about uh, that? Do you know what year that might have been? No, I'm guessing uh, 90, 100 years ago. I'm not sure. All right, now. then that should be up in town hall. How, was, how old would our parents be now? About 106, 105. If, it, if it's prior to 1902, it would be up in town hall. I don't remember any fire. You don't? And, and the uh, birth records would only be those of those that were born in Tuckahoe. If they were born in Bronxville or they were born in East Chester, that's where the records yeah. would be. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, come visit us sometime. We have plenty of items here to uh, be able to show you. I just want to mention that Lucille Zorzo, uh, when she was uh, going through her photos, she brought us uh, pictures of when Nixon came here. Oh, yeah. So that was really great because we didn't have all those photos. And also she uh, brought in the photo of her dad yeah. and uh, his uh, act. Uh, help me out. He was buried alive at the he was, quarries. He was, he was buried alive at the quarries. And she brought in that story too, which is very interesting. Um, so keep us in mind, all you folks at home, that we're always looking for more history. We want old pictures. Of my family? Yes. Oh, that's another thing we do. Talk yeah. about family. And we have uh, several several books of family photos, and um, I had given one of my, I'm one of six children, and I had my parents' picture and everything in there, and then I was scooting through. We had weddings that were done at the Assumption Church, you know, they stood out in the stairwell, you know, that side. And, and beautiful, beautiful family pictures, so, um, and we have them all cataloged, and so if you, if you have any family pictures, we just would really love them. I mean, they're, they're really great. And um, it, it just, it, it's just very interesting when you, you know, I, I go down on Thursdays and I'm looking at something and say, oh, I remember this and I, you remember this and it's just very nice and uh, I hope someday that we're going to have another 
um, book, uh, an open house. Yeah, like well, we did it at library. the library and uh, where else? Community, yes. Community Center. Center. And yeah. we had it open, and anyone could come in and just, we had the books on tables. Oh, and anyone could Center. just yeah. look right. through yeah. them. Yeah, and thought. it's really nice, and I think it'd be, it's time to do that again. Right. And it'd be very nice. Anyone else have any? Oh, I was in the Tuckahoe uh, Library quite a few years ago, and I was in there going to, um, they have a collection down there of old records in the Tuckahoe Library, and I found something in there on the um, AC Jerkins records post on 40 Midland Place, and but I didn't find anything in there on the ladies' auxiliary of the AC Jerkins post number 2768. So, uh, you have something in your records, I'm sure, on the Veterans Post, and I looked through your books for that, but you have nothing on the Ladies Auxiliary and how that was organized, who organized it, and so forth. I don't know when it was organized or how, but I know without the Ladies Auxiliary, the Veterans Post couldn't have existed because they raised most of the money for the Veterans Post. So um, that's interesting because uh, my husband was a veteran, and of course, later on, many years later, I joined the Ladies of Zilby. He was still alive then. And I became um, a life member of the Ladies of Zilby, which is not in uh, existence now because they gave up their charter because the people just weren't interested in the ladies. That's the uh, last No, that's fine here. Do you have any information, though? Uh, any programs, anything? You can get a lot of information, that's what I'm going to tell you, from. Um, Corinthia Jordan, you know Jordan, 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 Jordan sure, sure. his wife lives on South High Street, up right. at the corner there, yeah. up yeah. Yeah. She was one of the original members of the Ladies of Zillary, and she was one of those who was the in raising a lot of funds for the H.C. Jefferson Post. So I'm sure she has a lot of information in her house about the Ladies well, you know, That's what I was going to say to you, that the uh, only information that we have at Village Hall about the history of Tuckahoe is because of people who have given it to us. Uh, there's no way for us to get the information unless we you give it to us. And then we post it and we index it. Is there any way you can get in touch with her and ask her to well, loan it to us? My church. She's 90 some years old, so um, oh, could you want ask information, her? you're going to have to go to her. You know. Could you ask her? Would you take that job on? That'd be nice. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll try to get in touch with her and see if we can get that information because we like to know about that. We have very little. Someone called us the other day and wanted some information about the. Butterfly Inn that was on. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we have no information because we don't even have a picture. And they also, in the parking lot down by the senior Queenie. center, that they, and in that particular lot, they had, sorry, they had, it was a pants factory, it was a school, and then later it was a hospital. And then the building was sold to someone and then demolished later. But well, we don't have any pictures of that either, but it's all, Mike Pinto told us about that. Mm -hmm. And at that, in, the, in those days, I guess people didn't take as many pictures as we all do today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, anybody else have a question? Let me just say that uh, yes. we do have a lot of black history. <clears throat> For instance, uh, the latest uh, uh, combination of items that we had is from Jimmy Hill. Uh, Jimmy Hill was a very famous uh, musician, yes. and he was also uh, very active in uh, uh, social work uh, in Yonkers. Uh, but there, there was uh, one gentleman that uh, was a pianist that went was uh, trained in Russia. I, I have the names all listed here. Uh, but uh, anyone that wants to come in, also the churches. We have a great deal on the Charlotte Church uh, and the um, AME Church. So, uh, and for any other items you could uh, contribute to us, we'd appreciate. Corinthia Jordan is Jimmy Hill's sister. Well, that's another good. And then we had uh, a couple of uh, models, uh, Lovely Phillips, and I think her daughter also. So there's, there's a lot of history different, uh, of all different uh, groups in the community. Now I think we have a little rifle going on. <laughs> Thank you.
film. Yeah. This yeah. book is absolutely marvelous. Isn't that wonderful? Very exciting to look at. You need more time, really, to study it. That's, that's well, wonderful. Oh, it was highly. Okay, we're going to raffle off this uh, coverlet, our centennial coverlet. Uh, and uh, it, we have it. This is mine on there. Uh, it's shown there. And Arlene, you're going to pick a number? The number is nine eighty five eight three five. Eight thirty five, last three numbers. Eight thirty five. Eight three five. Bernice won it. We want to thank you for inviting us and um, just, you know, we'll hang around a little bit so you can look at all the, uh, come up and see all the items that we have on, uh, on display or read the books and come and see us, bring your old photos and anything, any history, you can type it up. Some people have, some people have typed uh, a little information about the street they lived on. And we, we put that in the book also. Thanks again. Thank all of you. Yeah. You know what? This gives you an added reason to do spring house cleaning. <laughs> and they need all these treasures you have hidden away. Thank you again.